Um, Steve, we'll start with you. Uh, first Major League Cricket season, can you tell us your impression of the tournament so far, um, specifically compared to other domestic T20 competitions? No, it's been great. Uh, really good fun, um, you know, playing with Washington. I think we've, we've had a really good squad, um, great people around, and it's been an enjoyable um, season to be involved in. Um, you know, I was disappointed I couldn't play last year. Uh, obviously, obviously, we had the Ashes on at that stage, but uh, to be able to be involved this year, it's something that I was certainly looking forward to and um, trying to continue to grow the game here. And um, yeah, it's been a wonderful tournament. Yeah, you, and you've got a personal connection to the US as well, obviously. Um, so what's been the appeal? Like, why did you want to come here to play here specifically? I think it's been spoken about for a long period of time. It, um, having a crack at the American market and I think uh, it's been w wonderful the way they've been able to put this tournament together um, it's yeah I think you've been able to lure some really really great players from around the world um, some wonderful local talent as well and you know we've seen you know just in our team some of the guys that have been able to uh, step up um, you know Netravalka obviously in the World Cup was unbelievable uh, Andreas Goose was outstanding um, you know Obis Pina for us he's hasn't had much of an opportunity but um, you know I think he's certainly got a lot of power um, in that six or seven role um, so yeah there's some some great local talent from um, all the teams and it's, it's just been good to to be able to unearth that I suppose and, and and see them come to fruition. And Ricky I mean Steve's obviously just touched on that you've got such great local talent but you've obviously got some really great international talent too how did you bring them together so quickly and cohesively? Um, it's, it's always the biggest challenge for a coach when you're coaching a, a franchise um, and I you know, it was well documented. I was a little bit later getting here than I wanted to as well. We'd been um, stuck in the Caribbean at the end of the World Cup, so I didn't really get here until three or four days before the first game. So mm. a lot of the uh, the preparation work and planning work was left to um, Cameron White and Sean Bradstreet. And, um, you yeah, know, Michael Kling is a big part of bringing this whole squad together. Obviously, he was here first year last year, and we had a, a good squad of players last year that made the playoffs, and we wanted to just try and, in, in, I guess, increase the, the quality of players that we had. And obviously, with Steve coming on board and, and Travis Head and Glenn Maxwell, uh, we brought in some of the best T20 players in the world into the, the one team at the one time. So um, it, the squad has come together really well. And you know, I'll echo what Steve had to say. You know, I, I heard a lot of good things about MLC last year. Of a lot of um, you know, guys like Shane Watson, who we come up against tomorrow night, was involved last year. They had really positive things to say about the tournament and how well run it was and how much fun it was. And and it, I think it's just got better. It's got better again this year with the quality of players, but whether it be local or or internationals. And you know, I think the only downside for us. So far this season, we had a couple of bad days of weather in, in um, North Carolina. Otherwise, everything's gone along really well. You know, we've played some good cricket. I think we, we deserve to be where we are right now going into the final, but we've got to make sure we get tomorrow right as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you spoke a little bit about it, like where MLC, I guess, sits in the broader landscape of the T20 sort of market overall. Um, you know, we've got arguably, I think, now one of the best competitions going into, and this is our second season. So what do you think needs to be done from an American point of view to get sports fans excited and come down and watch the games? Um, I think there's a, still a, a role to play for the players and the franchises. And I think um, I think the World Cup probably missed a little, a little trick as well by not promoting the game more at, at sort of grassroots level, getting into school level, I think, is where the next um, stage of growth will come from. Um, obviously, the generation of... Uh, American cricket fans now, we can't just um, sit back and, and uh, uh, hope that they're going to help promote the game. I think the game needs to do whatever it can in itself to, to get out and amongst the younger kids. And the, the, what I've said since I've been here, even during the World Cup and, and, and MLC, is um, if baseball is such a big game for youngsters here in, in the US, and you know, if you go to a baseball game, it's, it's four hours. To be fair, there's not a lot of um, excitement that happens through a a game of baseball, I think it's less than one home run he's hit per game. And so if you look at it that way, compared to what an entertainment package of three hours of T20 cricket can bring to the, to the younger generation, I think that's the way we should be looking at trying to promote the game here. So, um, you know, it's one of the reasons, I'm sure even with Steve and a lot of the, the best internationals that are here, I think they all feel that they've got a role to play to promote the game. Certainly one of the reasons that I'm here. Yes, I wanted to come and coach and, and hopefully win a title, but I think with the growth of the game being where it's at, um, I wanted to be here to help be a, be a part of all of that. So um, let's see. Um, I think next year there could be some, some other little things done, even if it's just when we're in 
Dallas, you know, getting kids to come to watch us train or, or going out to a school for a morning when we've, when we've got the day off, things like that. One will help our brand, it'll help the Washington Freedom brand, but it'll also, I think, help promote the game um, through the regions that we're playing in. Yeah, awesome. And looking ahead to tomorrow, so this is for both of you, key matchups, what are you looking out for? You know, I guess you've obviously played San Fran a few, few times now, um, so what, is, what does it look like tomorrow for you guys? Uh, look, I think we're pretty evenly matched sides, to be honest. Um, and you, the way it looked, the way that both teams are structured, um, you know, heavy, powerful batting at the top, uh, which has been certainly been the key to our success in this tournament, has been the way that Stephen and Travis and um, Andreas and Ravindra and, and, and Maxwell have played. We, we actually haven't got into our middle order batting that often this season. You know, Obis hasn't had a chance to do much. Mukta hasn't done anything. And, and Marco um, hasn't batted at all just yet. So our top order batting has been really good. So. Um, yeah, but T20 cricket is is T20 cricket. You know, it can be one over here and there. It can be one good partnership or one good catch can be the difference in the game. So, look, we we're very confident in the, in the way that we played, and we should be. We've uh, you know, our best cricket has been really good. And the thing that excites me is that we've actually got better every game that we've played. And when you know, I remember talking to the boys right at the start about about tournament play, it's you know we don't expect to start playing your best cricket, but come the end of the tournament, let's make sure we're finding ways to get better and better. And, and so far. We've done that. We've ri we've risen to every challenge. You know, to win that game that we did the way we did the other night. You know, in 15 overs, says what this team's all about and how well we're playing. So, no, we'll we'll go in confident, but knowing that we have to start the game really well and, and not let San Fran get off to a flying start either with bat or ball. Question from Andrew Greenstein for both of you: um, How does the fact that you played the Unicorns three days ago affect the strategy going into Sunday? I think it it helps if anything. That you know they're fresh in our mind. Um, you know, we watched them play last night in a, in a close encounter against Texas and uh, yeah, they're, they're probably going to be a little bit tired, obviously coming off back-to-back -back games as well, one day off and then the final. So, um, you know, that's a slight competitive advantage potentially. We've had a couple more days off, but um, you know, look, they're a really good side. Uh, they've got a lot of power, particularly up top with the batting and um, yeah, some, some quality bowling as well. So um, it's going to be a, a good contest in the final. Z from Crick Exec. Uh, Ricky, in the IPL, you coached one team to a championship, right? The uh, Mumbai and in 2015, and one team to a final in which you lost. So what do you take away from both of those experiences that you're going to apply tomorrow, right? Which is, you know, the championship of the MLC. No, we, we won't make any more of tomorrow than we did for our first final. Um, we had a really good chat as a, as a group and as a team um, about you know, yes, the enormity of the day, but also just saying it's just another game of cricket that's played on a on a slightly different stage. That's what tomorrow is going to be. With a, you know, obviously with a, you know, a result there that we've been looking forward to for the last the last month. Um, but I think the team that handles the situation in, uh, tomorrow the best will, will win the game. And and it's about it's about you know being nice and level and doing the basics well. And quite often in these big games, certainly when games that I've been around as a player or as a coach. If you, if you can keep the emotions down at the start of the game, by the, by the time the game starts, you know, the adrenaline kicks in and, you know, as long as you start quietly, by the time the game gets going, then some pretty big and special things can happen. So that's the way that we'll approach it um, tomorrow. We've got a lot of experienced players that have been there and done it all before as well. Some of our international players have won multiple World Cups. So, they, you know, they, they've been there and done it. And that's one of the advantages I think we'll have tomorrow as well. So another question for you, Ricky. Um, you gave an interview recently to uh, Crick Buzz a few days ago in which you were talking about your competitive nature and you mentioned that like even before matches you wouldn't say hi to Justin Langer even though you know you played with him for, for 15 years. Um, Shane Watson is six years junior to you. He's talked so much about how he admires you and how much he, he's learned from you and looks up to you. Uh, if Shane comes up to you tomorrow before the match and says hi Ricky, uh, how are you going to handle that? I won't see Shane before the match. <laughs> He'll be on one side of the ground, I'll be on the other. Um, yeah, it's one thing that I've had to... I mean, I, when you're involved in the IPL, as long as I have been, you know, the, the Indian players like to get together before the game. You know, they like to shake hands and embrace each other, and I'm the opposite. I like to stay away and just focus on what I, I need to worry about and focus on for that day. And